Hey guys, the video clip that you're about to see is a conversation I had with Yusuf, who is a doctor who went viral on Twitter due to his reasons as to why he left the NHS to pursue his passion as a fitness entrepreneur. In this video clip, we talk about the importance of money and how to test out different lifestyles to find a lifestyle that suits you, that makes you happy and makes you feel fulfilled as well. If you want to check out the entire podcast I filmed with Yusuf, then I'll leave a link down below in the description. Otherwise, sit back, relax and enjoy the video. And on that kind of point of money, so I'm obviously still a student, so I'm still living this student lifestyle. Um, but, you know, when you go into your career, you know, you do medicine for two years, how important does money become in the picture of things? Because if, if let's say they offered you the same salary that America earns, right? So a huge amount of money, let's say it's, you know, 400 grand a year, uh, eventually when you're a consultant, is, is that something that, that, you know, would change your mind or is it not you personally, or just generally as a, as a thought, um, how important, how important is money at that stage you know, in life? So the framework I would use for this is that there are different currencies that appeal to different people and different personality types. So you've got money, freedom of time, freedom of location, and satisfaction or impact. And each job will give you a different combination or different flavor of each of those four things. So that depends on what's your personal preference for money, what's your lifestyle requirements and so on as to how much money would you be happy with in a job that didn't feed your soul? Or would you work for a, a charity and know that you're really making an impact for pennies because you know that that's your life mission? Um, meanwhile, it, it, equally, you know, you could go and live in the Bahamas and be a surf instructor and not make much money, but you're living in the Bahamas and it's sweet. So, so that, that makes one, um, makes one of the impacts on your decision of, of career and, and pay. The other way to look at it, and we could maybe um, pull up a, a graph of this, but the there's an economic model called the backward bend curve of labor supply. Very exciting name, but what it means is if your hourly rate was five pounds an hour and someone said, right, I'm going to increase it to 10 pounds an hour and you're working 20 hours a week, you'd probably say, okay, I'll, I'll work 30 hours a week. And you say, okay, let's double it to 20 pounds an hour, you go, okay, I'll work 40 hours a week. And you go, right, I'll give you a thousand pounds an hour. You go, I'm going to work 70 hours a week. You go, right, I'm going to give you 1 million pounds per hour. You'd probably be working every hour under the sun. You then say, right, let's increase that from 1 million to 5 million per hour. You'd be like, do you know what? I'm actually just going to work five hours a week now because I'm so exhausted that I'd rather have the time back and I'm getting paid so much that um, I don't, I don't need to give up more of my time for more money. And so every person has their own kind of personal backward bend curve. That's, that's something I've never heard of. And that's, that's such a beautiful way to put it. Um, the different currencies in life. And so at least from my perspective, throughout medical school, what I've been trying to do is to, to really consciously think about these decisions. I know that um, in regards to medicine, I will be starting as an F1 in summer. That's, 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 you know, there's no question there. So I will know what it's like to work as a doctor full time with, you know, maybe not as much freedom and on a fixed salary. Throughout medical school, what I've been trying to do, you know, through this YouTube channel as well is, you know, try and see, oh, if I dabble in business, if I dabble in making videos, um, how will that make me feel? You know, does it make me feel fulfilled? Is it something I can, I can do full time? Is it, you know, um, in terms of money, is it, is it something that can fund my lifestyle? As well as that, every holiday I have coming up, I've tried to test some sort of uh, way of living to see if that's for me. So um, in January or in December, I took again uh, maybe two weeks to, to go to Kenya and live that Bahamas lifestyle. So I went to the, you know, on the coast of Kenya. I was there for two weeks on my laptop doing you know, some business stuff as well, but also enjoying the sunlight and seeing how that made me feel. And what I hope to achieve um, at the end of F2 is to, you know, is to come to a conclusion on what currencies that you just described matter to me and where I'll sit on that, you know, that curve. Um, and that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to see, yeah, see it very scientifically. You know, if I do have a hypothesis of what lifestyle I might want to live, I'll try to test it and see where I end up. That is an amazing way of approaching it. Um, because certainly there are, without doing that, like no matter how smart someone might think they are and they go, oh no i definitely want to live like that you sometimes you go and do it and you're like oh actually no it was it really wasn't what it was cracked up to be and there's always variables that you don't expect so i think that's a, a really smart way to do it because you're also building that optionality into your training and yes it probably has made med school a bit more of a headache for you if you're trying to do all this other stuff but 
if by the end of F2 you've got a bunch of roads opened up to you, then you're sorted. Definitely. And and that's why I really like what you did. Um, you know, you had propane fitness on the on the back end. I, I, I assume you didn't, you know, uh quit medicine and jump straight into propane fitness when it was earning nothing at all, because that would be probably higher higher of a risk. Um, so you probably had that in the background, I imagine, you know, as your side hustle to the point where you thought, actually, in terms of risk, I can probably do this. And also in terms of the risk of my career, like you said, the good thing about medicine is that you could always come back to it. And right now, if you think, actually, I'm not earning as much money as a YouTuber or whatever it might be, I can just do a few locum shifts just to boost my salary. And that kind of negates some risk, I guess. Yeah, the, there is a kind of, there's the Tony Robbins mindset of like, you got to burn your bridges and you just got to jump in like both feet and and then you'll make it work. I don't agree with that. I think um, maybe because I'm a bit more risk averse than that, but I just think doing what you've done of building multiple streams of income, seeing what works, testing different lifestyles. And then when you're in a position where you can say, right now I can comfortably jump from one to another without completely screwing myself over in the process. That seems to make more sense because running a business online is much more volatile than medicine. So it makes sense to lock in that medical degree have the option to fall back on something. Um, we, we've seen with COVID, so many people lost their jobs overnight and we were lucky enough to still be in employment, if anything, be in more demand. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think I would recommend anyone to do what Kenji's done is uh, of building stuff in the background, whether it's just a, a creative outlet or a source of source of cash or whatever, and give yourself options. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's, 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 that's so true. And I, I guess on the final point on that is that going back to what we said, you know, everyone might look at, I don't know, Cristiano Ronaldo and think, oh my God, I really wish I was him, but he's earning so much money. Um, but if you actually put yourself in his shoes, you know, maybe he's working hundred hour weeks, maybe he never gets to see his family, maybe all the pressure of trying to perform all the time can really, you know, can really um, make your life miserable. And if you're not willing to trade all aspects of your life, for that particular person you're comparing yourself to every single aspect about who you are your whole entire lifestyle then you can't compare at all and just try to focus on you yeah totally agree with that there was um someone on my on my course a few years ago who um was like oh i'm so jealous of of her um of, of kate and i was like oh how, how come and she was like oh she always gets good grades I'm like but also like the rest of her life is is terrible you know, you look, look at, she's, um, she's been working in a, in an abusive job with, um, an alcoholic father who's, um, hints of her hitting her and, um, she's looking after her mom who's unwell and, but she gets good grades. Like, would you trade your stately home in Berkshire and your happy family for, for that? Like, as you say, it's got to be a full, full trade. Otherwise it's, you know. Yeah, because what you end up doing, if you don't think of it that way, you end up comparing each individual specific point about your personality or what you want in life with absolutely everyone. <laughs> think about the internet now, because we all have Instagram. So you have an unlimited pool of people who you can constantly compare yourself to. And that's just a recipe for disaster, isn't it? Pretty much. It, if you want to say, oh, I want to have the portfolio of Warren Buffett, but the sprint time of Usain Bolt and the um, the body of Arnold Schwarzenegger, and you're like, well, there isn't a person who does that <laughs> exactly maybe in our heads but not in reality 